Thanks for watching this presentation. Today, I will tell you about a study that we've conducted in my lab about the effects of human noise on the behavior of hollow monkeys. Human activities have a pervasive impact on the environment, and among the negative consequences of such impact is pollution. In general, pollution pertains to the presence of contaminants that may have adverse effects on the environment. There are many different types of pollution, and several of them have been well studied for several dec decades now. More recently, awareness for the importance of noise pollution has been growing. Human noise has negative impacts on animals, both human and non-human. And there is evidence that above certain thresholds, it may be highly harmful. The prevalence of noise pollution is not uniform throughout the globe. Uh, and particularly, it's more prevalent in large cities and in industrialized countries. Still, human noise occurs throughout the planet and is even present in oceans and in natural landscapes. As a consequence, wildlife is encroached by human noise. So are there any consequences for that? There, there is no evidence that human noise causes changes in the behavior and physiology of wildlife. Concerning behavioral changes, animals display anti-depredatory behavior towards human noises, such as alarm calls or retreats. Noise also interferes with communication so that some signals are not perceived by conspecifics in noisy environments. Animals may also change the time they allocate to different activities when noise interferes with uh, their behavior. And social organization may also be influenced by noise. On the physiology side, there is evidence that some physiological processes are impacted by human noise. So besides having hearing problems, uh, animals that live in highly noisy environments uh, may also have uh, impacts on their metabolism. For instance, through the limitation of access to food in some areas or by obliging them to skip some feeding or resting periods. And noise can also interfere with immunity and with hormone regulation. Given its, its strong influence in so many different systems and processes, as well as different scales from communities to genes, human noise is expected to impact the fitness of wildlife. And uh, some evidence is uh, coming now on that. For instance, in Western bluebirds that are exposed to high levels of noise, uh, there is decreasing hatching success and the offspring has slower development compared to individuals in quiet conditions. However, information on the impact of human noise on wildlife is still missing, it's still scarce. In this study, we focused on howler monkeys. Uh, these primates distribute from Southern Mexico to Northern Argentina. They mostly eat leaves and fruits which they uh, consume in trees. They live in the trees all the time. They are arboreal, live in social groups, including several males and several females. And they use vocal communication for several different functions, such as to regulate intergroup special relationships. We work specifically with Mexican metal tower monkeys, which are now thought to uh, distributes only in Mexico and are critically endangered by extinction. So in their habitat, they are threatened by the loss, fragmentation and degradation of the environment, as well as by hunting. And there is some evidence that proximity to humans increases their exposure to diseases. There are several accounts of road kills Populations that live close to humans have uh, increased physiological stress. And uh, there are also some evidence of changes in their behavior. 
So in the previous study, we saw that other monkeys living close to human noise or being exposed to human noise uh, changed their behavior such that individuals that were on average closer to noise vocalized less, moved more, and were more vigilant. However, in this study, we could not parse the effect of habitat characteristics, such as habitat spatial patterns, from the occurrence of human noise. And we couldn't also assess the influence of sound intensity on the behavior of other monkeys. And this is why we designed the present study, which had three aims. So first, we aimed at describing human noise. And based on uh, those descriptions, we selected the most relevant noises to run uh, playback experiments and analyze the behavioral responses of other monkeys to them. We worked in the southern Veracruz state here in Mexico at the Los Tuxtlas region. We selected four from forest fragments and we focused on 16 adult males that lived in five groups. So to describe uh, human noise, we observed subjects during one year uh, and we recorded all the occurrences of human noises. So besides describing each noise, we also measured its intensity with a sound meter. These are the noises, so these are results for our first aim. Uh, you may see in this table that there were many instances of uh, human noises or human associated noises, and specifically we recorded more than 2,000 events of noise. And uh, this equals about uh, one noise per hour of, of observation. The most common noises were associated with vehicles or motors, megaphones, and dog barking. We classified sounds produced by dogs and cattle as anthropogenetic, uh, sorry, anthropogenic noise, uh, because these animals are uh, associated with humans. All the recorded noises evoked behavioral responses by males, in some cases with a very high response rate, such as cattle and fireworks. Uh, but there were also several noises that we could hear but not describe, and that uh, in the table is labeled as unknown noise. As to the intensity of noises, fireworks and noise associated with human activities, such as tree pruning works in, in the forest, uh, were on average the most potent. However, uh, when we look at the maximum intensity, uh, that was recorded for vehicle, motor activities, and fireworks. And after a careful consideration of uh, all of these elements that I've just described, we decided to select vehicle, motor noises, and dog barking as our experimental noises. Uh, these were frequent noises that elicited behavioral responses by howler monkeys and uh, reached high intensity. And uh, still in this table, I would also like to call your attention to the mean intensity of environmental noise uh, without human noise. And that was fairly low. However, uh, forests can be very loud uh, sometimes and maximum intensity of sound reach levels comparable to uh, those of human noises. So moving on to the second aim, uh, so we prepared uh, chainsaw and dog barking sounds for our experiments. We recorded them and then prepared. Uh, we used low and high intensity recordings for a total of four treatments. Okay, so each group was exposed to chainsaw at low and high intensity and dog barking at low and high intensity. Each group uh, was exposed to each treatment three times. During each day, we played back the recordings for 60 minutes in 10 minute blocks randomly distributed throughout the day. And we recorded all occurrences of vigilance, vocalizations, and movement away from the speakers during the playbacks. 
And this is what we found. When exposed to high intensity noise, males spend more time vigilant compared to both low intensity treatments and the pre-treatment phase, which was the one year period of observations that I described before. Males also produced more vocalizations in response to high intensity noise. It's important here that vocalizations were more frequent during pre-treatment than in low intensity playbacks. And this is because during that stage, several vocalizations uh, corresponded to log calls exchanged between studied subjects and males from neighboring rooms. And finally, as to movement, uh, we, we saw that compared to pre-treatments, males moved away more frequently from uh, playbacks of intense dog barking. So what do these results tell us? Uh, what we can see is that at Los Tuxlas, howler monkeys are exposed frequently to human noises. And some of these uh, sounds are very intense. For instance, vehicle noise is uh, 40%, about 40% higher than mean environmental noise. And for fireworks, this is of about 130% more. So uh, these noises are also uh, resulting in behavioral responses by hollow monkeys. So yes, we found evidence that human noises are affecting hollow monkey behavior. So these changes may entail opportunity costs associated with abandoning current activities to vigilate, vocalize, or to escape. And these changes could uh, imply or could lead to metabolic costs, as I described in the beginning of the presentation. So at the moment, we are analyzing fecal samples that were collected, collected during the study to see if besides these behavioral changes, Holler monkeys are also uh, showing physiological changes to anthropogenic noise. There are, of course, conservation implications associated with these results. So the most obvious one is that we should try to reduce the frequency and intensity of noise inside and around the habitat of these primates. It is also clear that the presence of dogs is to be avoided. So this is something that uh, we should find a way to, to manage. And as always, the, the biggest challenge for trying to, to, to put these types of actions uh, in the field is to gather support from those that are involved in the problem. But this is something that uh, we will leave it to another moment. So thank you very much for your attention and please write me if you have any questions about this study.